Um, so what's good, Broski Doodles? Thank you for listening today. Uh, I, I, I had something, Steven, to talk to you. Um, that has happened recently. We've had some actual disasters, na- natural disasters, well, not natural disasters, but disasters that hurt the nature due to this uh, new activity that's taking place. Something that's very new in in the way that I see. I haven't, at least new in the way that they're doing it now. And what I'm talking about, people, is gender reveals. And are gender they reveals. dangerous? Hmm. Do you know about? The recent fire in California that was caused by a gender reveal party? No. <laughs> Are you serious? Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, so there was this gender... I mean, this was pretty on, on the news. Uh, pardon Stephen. He lives in a very secluded area of the United <laughs> States. And very wet. In New yeah, New it's very too. like... Uh, very much like North Korea. They don't really get news from the outside, so it's very filter you know it's like a little bit a little republic of china right in the heart of of the u.s but what what has happened <laughs> is there was this party in california in one of these you know hill side houses where a lot of rich people live and they you know decided to have a little gender reveal party and this is i'm pretty sure it's self-explanatory but gender reveal is sort of a surprise way of revealing the gender of the of the offspring and then you know they mm-hmm. do it with different ways like a balloon exploding and it's either pink or blue and you know until then shit was calm but now they want to do like fireworks and stuff and yeah. like different you know make it grand right it's all about getting that insta pic or video and they did That's some cool. like fire shit and that lit up the fucking um i guess trees and bushes around and then he just kept going and kept going and then he burned like a whole section of california costing millions and millions of dollars and you know putting people in danger so oh my so gosh. it was it was crazy you know and this is this is the first time that it happens that bad but i'm pretty sure you know there's been like bad shit that has happened from people doing some gender reveals that are like out of this world you know like chill like it's just the gender of the kid you know yeah, I mean anything for anything for a party, anything for, to get people together. You know, especially after the pandemic, they you know people are just itching to be back together. But um, whenever I travel to the Midwest, you know, I love Arizona area. There are almost always a fire hazard. There's always a fire hazard going on, and they and they there's signs everywhere. Um, you know, <clears throat> uh, please no smoking. Uh, here and there, like they, they'll say, you know, barbecuing is is prohibited. They'll d- they'll just say these types of things, like you, you know what I mean. So they oh, obviously damn. did not. Yeah, yeah, no, there's there's a real um, effort from the government or from the local government to to obviously stop things. But you know, people are gonna be crazy. People are gonna be stupid. So well, I mean, damn, here in sucks. in Spain, they don't even allow you to make a barbecue anywhere. So. But how do you barbecue? How do you barbecue? You Spain? don't. That's what you do. That's a part of socialism. This is, it's part of the. You barbecue that straight straight to jail, straight to, to jail. jail. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, bro! Dang, I don't know if I could. I definitely could not live there then, man. That's crazy. If you live in the last floor of an apartment building and you have a terrace, like, you can do a barbecue. Oh, but because ha- fire doesn't doesn't catch doesn't go down a building. I mean, that part is more like to not not annoy the neighbors with the smoke. Man, it's just crazy. When you when you live in a place where it's all packed in, like New York type style, it's, yes. it's, yeah, it's, just, it's just weird, you know? And they don't even have parks like over there where you can go to a park and have a barbecue, you know? So, I don't know. I think a man without a barbecue is pretty much like a man without his balls, you know, and... You know, <laughs> that's literally I, how I feel. I feel, I feel. I feel a certain way about it, you know. So I agree. So yeah. That so no, sense. no barbecue, and I just feel like, I mean, they don't trust people to, to have. Uh, but you know what I what I what I wanted to get to with this is. Do you think that, I mean, I thought I knew about the. I thought you knew about this, about this event that happened with the fire, in California. No. But do you think that this is like? like getting out of control i mean with with the stuff that i'm telling you do you think people are just getting overboard trying to like 
I mean, this happened, for example, people trying to get a, 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 a selfie at a certain place and then they fall to their death. Like, yes. do you think social media and the urge to to just show your your face, I mean, sometimes it's not even your real life, it's just your imagination of what your life is. It's just so important. Like, they would do anything for that. Yeah, no, I mean, social media has changed everything. It's changed the way people think, uh, do things, you know. And yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, I mean, most of social media is not their real life all the time. It's almost become, it's almost become like the social photo album, right? Like at least that was when it was okay. When I thought of, when I jumped onto Facebook and I was posting these pictures, I just thought to myself like, I'm going to be able to look back at these pictures down the line and say, well, you know, oh, I remember when I was here, when I was there. And God forbid there's ever anything that happens to my house, a hurricane, a fire, or whatever. Like those photos are digital. So I will always be able to, to have them, right? But now there's like this oversaturation of photos and, and doing stuff. And let me show what I'm doing all the time that, that yeah, I mean, it's, you know, anything for the gram, right? Anything for the, for the snap or whatever. <clears throat> and unfortunately, it's, it's causing, in some you cases... Know, back in our days, damage. when you would say anything for the gram... You know, you were talking about selling a <laughs> GPS and hitting your boy, you know, <laughs> Dirty Steve for a gram. And, you know, you, you fuck it. Like, I, I understand that. But today, that means anything for the gram is for the Instagram, for the picture, for the likes. Right? Um, and this ties up to a documentary that I recently watched. It's called The Social Dilemma. It's on Netflix. And, I mean, it talks more about the advertisement side of it, but but it is crazy how how we're controlled by this social media without us even knowing about it because you don't have to. But by the way, did you see that documentary? I love that documentary. And it wasn't too... It wasn't it was swinging one way or, or another way. It felt like it was just the middle ground letting you know what's, what's up. And I, I honestly... Dude, I was I was just playing it, and N Natasha was just in the room, and like it immediately caught her attention, and we both thought it was a wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Um, That's crazy. Yeah. Wasn't yeah. it funny that the, there was a guy there that was like, um, <laughs> he's like, I'm the inventor of the Facebook like button, <laughs> and he was like, yeah. sounds just sounds weird. Like, I mean, I'm not saying it's not huge, but. Yeah, you know, if and, that's what, and even if, him. If, if that's what you're going with. Like, if I meet you at a party and I'm like, hey, what you do? Oh, I invented the like button at Facebook. It's like, mm, it just sounds assholey. Yeah, but I mean, it, it that's huge. I mean, the, what is it, the buy now button with eBay? I think that was one of the first, like, real buttons that that were brought to like an action i guess or something mm. I, for, I forget what it is but that guy's a mil multi-millionaire just to, just to fucking buy now like the yeah but i guess i mean i'm talking a bit of shit it's not that he invented just like the like button and that sounds simple but the concept of it like we need to yeah. understand that before that you didn't have a way to react you know and that was that right. became the first micro reaction because i think that there may have been yeah. comments before i would imagine so right i don't I mean, remember there was but this was a way because like who puts a comment like i'm thinking about this now like analyzing it a comment is left by somebody that reached a certain threshold of interest on what you're saying right but it takes a lot of that for somebody to leave a comment but for somebody yeah. to leave a like the threshold of interest is very low but yeah. they, the 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 the, the, um, the social effect of it is that when somebody gives that like, which is very easy for somebody to do, they don't have to invest much time or energy to do it. That translates in a reaction for you, which bumps you up and one makes mm -hmm. you want to stay in the site. So the concept behind it is very grand, even though the the end result seems so so like simple, you know. Right. Yeah. No, I I agree. Um and, and and even them they they were like all all in on that on that reaction and they love that 
that concept and, and how they could do that. But they didn't realize, you know, where people would take that like button and how people would receive receiving likes, how they would react to receiving likes. Right. Um, that's what I, I mean. I, I think especially when they started showing the stats of like when when depression and suicide started really ramping up was right at the time of the 2000s when Facebook and everything started coming up where they thought this was I'm going to give you reassurance that what you're doing is awesome the adverse effect happens to some to a lot of people where what they if they're not getting enough likes they feel insignificant yeah you know? it sort of makes you like instead of being happy for the likes you get you just are like oh but she's getting more or you know like it's that comparison yeah. and yeah people like to compare to you kind of have like a global leaderboard right like before it was vague like nobody really you know but now it sort of puts it out there in your face and for people that are not strong enough mentally and emotionally it's definitely mm -hmm. something that could cripple them and i think this is more rev relevant in like younger red generations but yeah they really get caught up on it and, and i can understand i mean like me and you were like from if not the last one of the last generations that like had a life before the internet um mm -hmm. especially before the internet was commercial right because um you could say the internet was invented in the 80s or something like that but you know in the early 2000s it wasn't really a thing like You know what I mean? Yeah. You weren't on your... Com you might go to your computer and use AOL, but you didn't have all these apps and tools that that allowed this social um, the experiences to, to be had, you know? Like, it, it's really crazy how things have changed in the recent times where, like, Facebook sort of... Like, and you see this on the Dilemma movie. Facebook sort of holds, like, the more political and more serious conversations, you know? But Facebook uses that to their advantage because that's, that's, they know that people are going to spend more time if they're, like, committed to something, like, politically. Like, what? No. No, but this, you know. <laughs> and, I, and I've been yeah. caught up. I've been caught up in that myself. And I don't do it anymore because right. I understand what they're trying to do. But, you know, you get the debates going on there. And it's really not the best place to... To, to discuss and Steven knows this for many of you that don't know uh, some of the guests that we've had here are people that I've, I've had or Steven has had discussions on Facebook where you're like mm, this is not the best place for for uh, discourse is that the word yeah 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 for for that yeah I, I, I don't know the word either to be honest with you oh okay um, great the but but I do feel like The people who really stand hard on their flag, you know, are are standing hard because that's all that they've been fed, you know. And the longer that they have been fed that, the longer that they have been advertised to. And that's what's really crazy. You know, one of the one of the quotes that stood out was like, if you're if uh, if you're not paying for a product, then you are the product. And that's insane. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have all these social media accounts, when you have Google, Gmail, even I was talking with my with one of my teachers and he goes, you know, Gmail is free, but they get to see everything that you email, who promotes to you, how they promote to you, what you click through everything. So their database on you is enormous on just you, you know, and then and you multiply that by billions of people. So, yeah. So, you know, that that's private. You know, one thing is privacy is not a big deal, right? Like, I, I think you're when people think of privacy, they think social security numbers, they think credit cards, they think addresses, home, you know, all that stuff. Right. But that's that's for one individual who wants to come and try to do something nefarious to you. But what about the people What about, you know, those, the, the advertisers, you know, that's really where the privacy comes into play. And so you have to limit what you, you have to try to make a conscious effort to try to limit your exposure to those, to those channels, you know, uh, before you would be able to, 
well, this is kind of going back to what you were saying, but I, I feel I felt like, you know, when you're in the car, right, and you have road rage, it's super easy to have road rage because that person's in their car, you're in your car, and you can flip them the bird, and you know that they're not going to do anything to you, and you're not going to do anything to them, right? But that becomes so much easier when you're on a platform full of people and you start raging on your topic and perfect you know yeah yeah yeah. keep raging they don't care and i mean that's why like there's face facebook had that whole like um mark zuckerberg was in front of uh the deposition of um what is it the privacy deposition whatever it was yeah congress and he right goes, yeah congress and exactly and and it was like oh you know but you are you're spreading fake news oh yeah no we we didn't know we you know we're just you know we're, we our filters are off or this and that um you know i i beg to differ because really you don't really care what's coming through you just know that this particular genre comes through and speaks to 30 percent of your audience and 30 percent of your audience eats it up and that rep that represents 40 percent of your revenue something like that yeah and so that's that's yeah, they don't. That's, you know, at the beginning, I thought that, and I think there's still a, a bit of that, that the Silicon Valley companies and social media companies, they're a bit biased towards the left. And I still think so in, in like the workers that they have. You know, a lot of the workers yeah. they have think that way. Not all of them. And, and at the end of the day, they filter a lot of the things. So you will, you know, it is... Uh, makes sense for you to see this bias. But I think the owners, the chairmen, the investors, the people that make the money from this, mm -hmm. in their mind, they're like, look, man, I'm from the political party of making a shit ton of money. So yeah. if you have a page that's from the left and it keeps you there, you know, uh, preaching to the choir and keeps you on the side, then I'm going to give you that. If you're somebody from the right and you want to feel like, yeah, there's other people that think like me, oh, I and we'll give you that like and then you realize yeah. oh okay it's not a political thing it's like whatever makes you rage or makes you stay in this fucking screen for the longer time then i'm gonna do mm -hmm. it now i will yeah. say about this and i don't know if eventually i will break but i feel like with facebook they're becoming a lot like youtube where they have a lot of videos okay. and, and once you start watching a video they continue to more videos but the thing is, there's times when I'm watching a video and it's, it's fucked up. They time it where the video starts and when the climax of the video is going to happen, then you get this little thing where like, oh, an ad is going to start in 14, in 10 seconds. And then it's like a 15 second ad that you have to watch. And when that comes, I'm like, okay, fuck this. And I don't care what happens after this. Like, fuck you. It like, and in a way, I'm not doing this because... To, to, to sort of say fuck you to Facebook, which it also is a good thing, you know, to say yeah. fuck you to these social media companies. But it was more like, nah, like, I, I barely had interest on this. And now you're telling me I have to watch that ad? Like, no, nah, I'm, I'm going to keep going on the feed. So I don't know if that's just me or do you think that in general that's not effective? Or do you think that there are people that are like, oh, I'll watch this? I mean, if they're doing it, it's because it oh, should yeah. work, but... Yeah, no, I mean, absolutely. People are, are super interested in anything like in their even if you sh I've caught myself not being totally interested in something and just saying, OK, well, you know, I'm already this invested. Let me just finish it out. Oh, I got a 10 second, 15 second ad. OK, I'll, I'll wait it, mm, okay. you know, whatever. But it's like it's I mean, people people idolize Facebook, man, and they take it at they, they think it's actual news. You know, and really what it is, is somebody's opinion, you know, and even if it's very, very even skewed. If, yeah. Even if it's wrapped in a beautiful cinematic, you know, f form and videos. Think about this. Videos are not pictures. So the longer that you're engaged with their site, you know, the better. Right. So a video is always going to be better for them rather than a photo. They They say. They're telling us that, you know, if you want engaging content, you know, that videos is the way to go. Pictures are awesome, but videos are, you know, what I mean? that's why TikTok is so, you know, so um, popular. That's why 
you know, Instagram, start doing stories because videos are, are awesome. You know, they're better. Um, especially when, when they're received in, in full screen, right? There's nothing else to distract you, you know? So that's at their benefit. That's for sure that we, we get to absorb more, but that's definitely more at their benefit because they can turn around and say, well, we have an engagement time of, you know, a video took the engagement time of somebody being on, let's say this is not real numbers, but let's just say it takes, uh, I had somebody on Instagram for seven minutes with pictures. Now I've got people on Instagram for, th- for 20 minutes on average, on average, you know, because of videos. Yeah. Now, you do know? you, do you think that like with Instagram, right now they have the reels, which is like mm-hmm. the TikTok copy, right? Yeah, I don't. Yeah. And for some, and what I'm seeing is when you go into your Instagram and you look at the reels, it's not people you follow. It's people that they're promoting, and it's all girls dancing to some song, and it's like, and showing their ass. And I'm just like, what the f- like, what is this becoming? Like, it's crazy, <laughs> you know? Yeah. All of them is doing these little TikTok dances, and. And I'm just like, I'm. I, it's the first time in my life where I feel like I'm very detached from from a certain culture, you know. That yeah. I've. It's weird. Like what? What? I don't. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I really don't know. I mean, I, I think, I think obviously sex sells, so they're, they're definitely going to put you know these. By the way, which is which is another thing too, you know, it's it's kind of a vicious circle, right? These girls see other girls with fat asses and big tits and you know all that stuff so they go out and either start working out which would be the health, healthier version or they just straight up go and buy their body and then go on tiktok and then get famous immediately then you have outlets like only fans who are just you know doing doing that kind of stuff so i mean in, in a way i know that if you're a person who believes in just making money and and being successful for yourself you know technically you know it's kind of like the stripper argument like oh well you know she's just trying to make a living out here you know and there's nothing wrong with that for sure fine but there's a consequence to that there's a ripple effect and i don't think anybody realizes that and you know the more you're on tiktok i will say and i think i talked to you about this before but like you know yeah i i don't see any of those girls i see once in a while those girls but i always see I always see the the funny ones like the my the people who are or the the barbecue guys or the builder guys you know those are the things that I engage with the right, longest because so that's, that's, that's what you follow things. but uh yeah. I guess because Instagram's trying to like promote it and you don't follow anybody on the real I, I don't know like they just put people and I'm like I don't know any of these people yeah. and it's all I like this super hot girls just like doing some dance and showing their ass yeah, actually, I've never been on Reels, and that's because I just Instagram as a whole for me or is kind of like I know it's not dead. I feel like Snapchat's probably dead to me, but um, but Instagram I know it's like really really important, but it's just like I never understood it past. I never understood it past like the pictures, you know. I just enjoyed posting the pictures and the evi- the occasional like video, but it, as a post, not as a story and not as a reel. And by doing that, it just creates this whole nother level of like, in order to be even remotely important, you have to have this consistently consistency there. And I'm just not, I just don't have the time and energy for it. Now, I know you don't have the time yourself, but do you, do you consume the stories content and... No. The thing is, I never I liked bear, the stories bear, yeah. concept. Like, I'm, I'm with you. Like, I like the whole post thing. And yeah. and I and, and I don't ever put stories. I only put posts. The only stories mm-hmm. I put are like to sort of promote the Broski Doodles channel. Um, because I cannot post it, I cannot repost it, so to speak. But um, yeah. Do you think it is getting saturated? Because I I just I just feel like there's like an endless sea of hot chicks with fat asses on Instagram. Like is it? You can never run out. There's so many. Do you mm-hmm. think it will get saturated, or do you think there's just there's enough food for all of them, like forever? Like, do you think that job will be like will become a staple, like a real thing? I I I don't know. I don't know how. 
I don't know. Yeah, I, to be honest with you, I feel I feel like that that's just gonna be endless, because that's just endless, you know. And there's endless tastes, and somebody likes some brunette, somebody likes some blonde, somebody likes some curvy, somebody likes some thin, you know. And it's like, man, like it's endless. It's endless. And you, and you as you a know? girl. <coughs> <coughs> I mean, if you have, <coughs> if you have like a subscription, right? That's like uh, twenty bucks a month, right? On this OnlyFans thing. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know how it works, but let's say they have a subscription where you pay them twenty bucks a month. They just need to get a hundred guys, and that's that's two thousand bucks a month. I mean, in yeah. in the U.S. is not that much. But let's just say, like, as a starting thing to, like, pay your bills and then keep growing from that. Like, I guess to sort of favor your thesis on this, uh, it seems like, yeah, like, I mean, they don't need that many people to make money off of this, right? So right. It, it might be the case that this is going to be a staple. And like you said, sex sells, and that's a, a staple all the time. That doesn't matter if it's back in the day or now. Yeah. And the OnlyFans gives them that. I mean, it is saturated, but you think that it, there's enough for them to eat by, you know, selling their milkshakes and. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, bro. Those our young listeners are not gonna know what a milkshake. Is. <laughs> that doesn't exist. It does exist. No, no, no. But what I'm saying is like that. The whole the milkshake brings out a thing. Oh, okay. No, I mean. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I actually meant like because they sell. No. <laughs> I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't oh, mean shit. they were selling their tits, which they might be. But what I mean is, no, because some of these girls like will put a post like selling some protein shake, you know, because they make money. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. they, make, they make money. Um, That's funny. Yeah, That's I wasn't hilarious. even trying, but you see that connection there. You see what happens. My bill shit brings other boys to the yard. Ain't that? It's better than y'all. Yeah, that brings me back to like a whole different world, right? Like that day. Yeah. It's just different 20 years ago. It's just so different. Um, but yeah, these girls, I mean, they sell like protein shakes and, you know, other things, uh, bathing suits and stuff. And I mean, I, I support them, you know, keep grinding. I just find it weird. It's just so weird that you could just do that and, and you're good to go, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, from a moral standpoint, like, I would have a hard time being okay with that, um, say, if I had a daughter, right? I mean, but then at the same time, like, you know, that's the equivalent of my parents saying, oh, you got to go to college, and you got to go to college, you got to get a degree, you got to do this. And really, that sort of mentality, although it's still valid, it's, it's not it's not the only way you know um and so like i'm i'm gonna look at it like oh well like why don't you become an entrepreneur why don't you start you know learning a a craft no dad i'd rather shake my ass and you know sell my milkshakes i'm like dang i mean contrary to popular belief i think that if steven was to get on some hot you know little outfit I think you could, you know, start start something interesting. The OnlyFans. Uh, so I world. thought I just thought about that while you were talking about it. I was like, dude, like, I mean, it would it, what if there's some fetish out there that girls like, <laughs> you know, uh, meatball meatball esque guys. Yeah, you know what I mean. There's like dad bod. I mean, all I need is a hundred at twenty dollars a month. Yeah, right? all I, need I mean, that's that's what it. I think about. That's what I think about. <laughs> All you need is a hundred sick motherfuckers, and that's it. And you're good to go. You quit your job, and and you know you spread them legs. I mean, all I'm saying is, <laughs> you gotta diversify your portfolio these days, guys. The world is changing, and we cannot be stuck in the past. You ever meet somebody that didn't grow up with? Like, I mean, even though we, when we were growing up, there was an internet, we got sort of got caught up with it quickly. Like, it was part of our, our of our growing up. So it's, it's sort yeah. of natural for us. Mm-hmm. But then you might meet somebody, like, even in a work environment or somewhere, and they're just like, no, because, you know, this happens in Spain a lot because Spain is, is not as modern as the U.S. 
and then you have mm-hmm. these pockets of people that still live like 50 years ago and still think that yeah. way but this happens everywhere but you meet certain people that you're like yeah dude you just you were successful they always talk about like no i used to be the manager of this and that and but then they just never kept on with the times and today even though they have all these people skills and all this experience they just don't know the basics of today's mediums to be able to project those skills and it sort of cripples them um when they're older which is even more fucked yeah i was driving through marco island this weekend i was telling you i was in naples and then i and uh our five-year anniversary is coming up and i was driving through marco island just to see like some of the airbnbs around there or at least the, the vibe to see oh what can we do if we do rent here right and I started going through one of the things that we like to do is drive through like really expensive houses and just to kind of like, you know, fantasize and materialize um, that that outcome for us. And, and dude, every single house, I would say 90 plus percent, everybody was old, 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 like like retired and old. Right. How do you and know? Because like we're outside and shit. Yeah, they would come out of their garages. They would be like messing, like I guess active older people. But I'm just thinking to myself, like, wow, like, you know. And that was like, what, you know, what if would it be crazy to just go up to them and say, hey, you know, what do you do, or what, you know, what I'm saying, what did you do, right? <laughs> just because I, I want to learn and make this kind of money, right? <laughs> and uh, and I'm just thinking to myself, yeah, no, that's a good idea. But now that you know you're saying this, and I had thought about this a couple of days ago, I'm thinking like. Even if they were to tell us what they did, it would almost be irrelevant. Mm, it would be irrelevant. Yeah. Because it's like, because they could not res- replicate what they did. Or at least, no. we couldn't. not that they could not. But they, the, yeah, but like it, the, the majority of them, like, oh, yeah, you know, I, I, you know, was a regional manager and then I became a district manager and, you know, I started my own company selling sewing machines. Well, that's, that's dead, you know? That's never, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was lucrative then and now it's not because China changed everything or the internet changed everything. So it's like, it, it, those people got out right on time. No, I mean, they, right on time. they're lucky that they were able to make all their money and be set for life, you know, and if they're living in Marco Island, I mean, this is a very expensive area in the, yeah. in the, in the South Florida, West Coast. Um, I've been there a couple of times because my... My family in Miami, every year they, they would want to go yeah. to one of the hotels there that's super nice and shit. So I would go there. Yeah. And it's it's a beautiful place. But, yeah, it's a bunch of people retired. Uh, and it's a pretty expensive place to live. But it's beautiful. Yeah. But I, I guess just trying it back to what we were saying, it's just like, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, it, that's that's not possible anymore. You can, when they, when they go and then their children or they're you know who own that property you know you're gonna have to buy that property from them and mind you i i went through these are super nice houses but there's also like really older houses that ha- that again are like two three four five million dollar homes old i'm talking about like i would not like to live in this house but you buy the house for five million you knock it down and then you re, re- you know resurrect a more modern home which is another couple million dollars so you now have to and and when we were looking on zillow in the 90s those properties sold for half a million or a million there's a big difference here you know we're talking about and then well, from the 90s inflation from the 90s like yeah but from the 90s one million, million to five million it doesn't seem like it's that big of a hike I, I would assume that that's like consistent with other hikes you know in the right 30 no, no, years. The, Right, exactly. Like, you know, I, I understand that the inflation goes up and this and that. But what I'm saying is, is that like you're going to need you're going to need to not only buy the house, but you're going to need to demolish oh, the okay, house okay. and build a new house. Well, what you're saying is and that so back in the day for half a million, you will get the land and the new property. Now exactly. for five million, yeah. you get the land and the cost of Pretty having much. to fucking tear that one apart. And then making a new one. So, yeah. So, you're pretty much paying millions and millions for just the piece of shit land that might get, you know, flooded in the next few decades. And then I think (laughs) about that, too. I think about that, too. I'm like, Gonya, like, in, I don't know, whatever the scientists say that it's going to happen. But 
I would hate. I'd be beside myself if I drop thirty million dollars on a home that you know costs me a million dollars a year, and then it's gone. What I mean by a million dollars a year is that like uh, thirty million. Let's say in the next thirty years, you know, Florida starts to inundate. My God, like. <laughs> You know, you, no. I don't know. I, I can't imagine the insurance. Well, I think company. it's, it's going to happen. I don't think it's a good idea to buy anything expensive. Well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm talking shit. Marco Island, I don't know what their situation is. But I do know, like, South Beach and certain areas, like in the Keys, they're pretty. Yeah. It's fucked. Yeah. I, 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 that's terrible. But I'm, I, I don't know. I'm, I feel like I'm digressing. But I guess what I'm saying is this is like, if you're not keeping up with the times then you're you're fucked you're, you're not gonna be you're fucked yeah you're fucked i mean they're, 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 and especially when you're in an area where you never expected things to change like if you're a doctor or like a computer engineer you are sort of taught from the beginning that your career is always being improved and we're finding new things so if you're a good doctor and you graduated 40 years ago most of them keep up with the new techniques the new inventions and you and same as if you're a programmer or something that works with tech you have to be always in the sort of lookout for the next new thing but there's some things yeah. like i mean i don't nothing comes to my mind but you know like like somebody f that sells from a brick and mortar store right like mm -hmm. they just have some 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 shoes or whatever the fuck they sell and they never got right. to the point of like making this system searchable for people online for you to order online for you to do things if you never got to that you're fucked and it doesn't matter how much yeah. experience you have how good you are at making shoes you know if you didn't if you don't make that that change that evolution of making everything digital you can always keep like your physical stuff i think that's a beautiful thing especially you see that more in europe where there's like specific stores that sell specific things that you're like oh i prefer coming here and like talking to the guy and shit that still has value right. but you cannot only stay there you need to also have the website with the products with the stuff to yeah to make it work yeah yeah i mean that the the companies that survived the the initial pandemic shutdown were those who were able to adapt quickly others not so much you so, know what one thing I was I was thinking about in in this same topic is that like for example music. You know I remember when I used to go to play music in bars and different venues and stuff, and you either didn't get paid or got paid very little, and I never really cared about being paid because I just wanted to sort of let myself be known, right? Like that was my yeah. I'm doing all this so that people can get to know me and I can grow um, a fan base. Right. And as time went on, in the more recent times, I've come to realize, and this is also my personal opinion, so if people have different opinions on this, please let us know. But my opinion that from my experience has been that when you go to like a place to play your music and you're not mm -hmm. playing to people that have listened to you before or even care about you or know you, you're just like in a venue and there's a bunch of people and you're playing your music. You go through this whole psychological stress of you having to fucking lower your humbleness so much so that you can play here when a lot of people people are not listening they're talking over your music it's a whole uncomfortable thing and you know you kind of feel like a little i mean you're not getting paid so you you could even come you know say you kind of feel like a little slave where you're just there right. playing for these people they don't give a fuck you you hurt your ego because you work on these songs that you play and and you put right. all this and then you get this like, this reaction where you're like fuck then maybe this shit sucks you know right and uh, the best that could happen is maybe one or two people or a couple people that day end up like enjoying your music and following you and wanting to know more of your of your stuff right and then mm -hmm. I compare that to like what you're able to do online by putting music videos up, promoting it online, and the reach that you have. And it sort of just puts me in a space where I'm like, I'm not even interested in like playing, I, I'm not interested in playing physical concerts. Like, unless it's a concert where people are coming to see me, right? Yeah. And I have, have had a few of those, and that's a different thing. 
But while you're sort of climbing the ladder, you're not going to have every weekend a group of 50 people that are going to go see you. So yeah. what, I, what I'm trying to say is that I, I've come to the conclusion that it's a lot more beneficial for you to worry about having a nice little formula of putting content out and spreading it instead of wasting that time in going to like a physical place to try to capture the interest of people that have never heard of you. Especially if your music is not like some reggaeton or, you know, popular. Dan- dancey yeah, type of thing. Dancey type of yeah. shit that can be, you know, if you like the music I make, it's very like, you have to listen to the lyrics. You have to analyze the stuff. And people don't give a fuck about that. It's a very secluded amount of people. So, I mean, I, I don't want to get off the topic, but it's just like even I that I grew up with this whole thing I've had to like analyze myself and be like all right what is it that I should be doing to push this shit like what is the most effective way and I've always come to the conclusion in the recent years that you have to push the online thing like it or not that's just where people's interests are you know yeah mm. What do you, I mean, what are you going to do? Really? And, and I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's a little bit easier, right, for you to do it that way as long as you learn the skills that you need. And you don't need to be a, a, a mastermind, but you need to at least know that, you know, you post something, you post something consistently, you post uh, good content. And what I mean by that is like visual content. You know, people are going to, even if they don't analyze your whole song now, if at least they subscribe that quick, like you, you were talking about the like button, like that quick hit that subscribe button. You know what I mean? It, it, it at least allows you to pop up on their feed later on because you know, they're subscribed to you and you know, that, the the, uh, you, you bypass that algorithm and, and it, you're automatically there. So it's like, if you can get, if you went to a, 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 a restaurant or one of these places where you play for free and you got one or two people that night, when's the next time you play at another location? The next week, right? One or two? Well, imagine being able to do one or two every day. From and your home. One or, from your home, exactly. And, and so, you know, it, it, in some ways, it's actually made people successful and made people get noticed. But, in, you know, if you're not... If you're not able to to even first of all you have to wrap your brain around that concept and then if you're not able to 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 adapt and 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 learn just a like you can't just be a musician you need to learn how to be slight a, a little bit of a marketer as well you know so once it, you know it's it, it's kind yeah, of it's, it's, it's complex kind of but, new, but the world. I, I just I mean, I guess, yeah, it's not easy in the sense that you need to know a lot of a lot of things. But, you know, like this whole idea of, like, you go to different venues, different bars, and you play your ass out, and eventually somebody's going to notice you, and then your career goes up and shit. Like, that doesn't yeah. exist. I don't think that okay. exists anymore. Like, the amount of concerts you have to play for you to get the same amount of growth that you can get through online... It's just sad because it kind of makes it irrelevant to play a show um, in live, you know, like like that that whole idea of like you going to a place and you're playing for some people and then those people are going to be like, oh my God, that's really cool and shit. That's not my experience. And maybe I haven't been in the right crowds, but my experience is that people that go to a bar and are listening to live music, they just want to listen to some shit that they, re- they recognize, they remember, some cover. And yeah. and that that takes me to a different section where it's like, if I have to play some covers and then try to sneak in my songs in between covers, then then I just get to a point where I'm just like, I just don't want to do this. Then like it's just you know what I mean. Like I prefer to put it online, and if and the people that like it enjoy it, and then the people that don't like it peace, and I don't have to waste my energy and time and stress and all this shit and even money because sometimes you spend money going to the place. And, yeah. And then for what? For like, so obviously the practice is important, but you can practice at home, and and you do need a little bit of that live uh, experience. So I'm not saying that's not something you should do at all, but um, I just think that people need to really concentrate on the internet stuff. People are making a lot of money on the internet, and they might not even ever meet the people that they're making money from. I don't think that should be the case because I do like to actually eventually get to a point where we're able to to interact in with, with the people that listen to us but 
What I'm trying to say is that if you just stuck in the past, and this applies to all types of of careers, if you're stuck in the past and you haven't moved forward with the whole internet, uh, I feel like an old guy. Like you gotta get into the interwebs. Yeah, you gotta get on the computer, click a thing, and just start hitting uh, the Facebooker and the uh, Instagramming and all that stuff. You yeah, gotta get all the Twitters. Get off my page, right? Instead of the lawn. No you gotta get all here. the Twitters, all the Twitters. I'm gonna get them. No, but you definitely need to be on top. And if you have any other uh, ideas or tips that you think that could help us, do let us know. Uh, even though we we like what we do, we're always looking for new ways. And you know, there's always people that that got new ideas, especially the youngins. So. So yeah. let, let us I mean, know. Maybe you can. Maybe you. I'll let you know something right here. Uh, why don't you start an OnlyFans where you're you're you you start lathering yourself up with butter or 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 whatever, and and you just shower yourself while you play guitar. Inevitably, you're sneaking in here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Your music. Yeah. And and uh, and then people are are there. Are they for for it, you know? So you're saying <laughs> apply the old school strategy of sneaking your songs in between the covers, but instead of covers, we're talking about buttering my my naked skin. Buns. Okay. <laughs> exactly. The plums. Or I mean and and and, <laughs> and uh and I mean just to kind of backtrack a little bit to the restaurant thing, I mean or you know, like a venue. I do think that these places are a good place to practice um, uh, your your uh, reception, right? Like, uh, did I play this a little? Uh, what tempo should I play this song at? You know what I mean? What's going to get people more more involved? You know, I mean, I'm sure that you've had songs where were slightly different to what y you actually released. Like how you initially began writing the song probably changed to be a little bit more catchy down the line right um because that's just the, the way of the world like and i'm i'm super um uh you know i'm I, i'm what's the word i'm looking for i'm hopeful just oh, yeah i'm hopeful but i'm also like uh but th i fall victim to not caring about the lyrics as much because um you know the the music i grew up on was disco and and those were always more moving disco not, when not, the fuck did you grow up no because my my dad they would play like the disco like oh, okay, i, okay. I love like the the music that my parents listened to were disco whereas some people were listening to like uh leonard skinner <laughs> leonard skinner <laughs> let's um, let zeppelin pink floyd yeah more more lyrical and more and more passion behind it and and you know once funk and soul and you know what i mean like i mean bluegrass is a wonderful wonderful uh genre of music but you know that's that's that takes a certain type of person to listen to it and if you get what i'm saying like it's it's not it, unless you grew up on it you wouldn't really fall into it right so I, I guess what I'm trying to say is use these restaurants, use these venues as a way to work on your music, even if you got to do it for free, but grind Monday to Friday from home online. So, okay. I, and, and tell me and tell me, I would actually love because these the people who are listening to us are probably way more connected than we are. Um, so leave us a comment. Let us know what what are some of the um, the channels that you're listening to or one of the, some of the ways that you see artists whether they're people you you follow or, or yourself how how are you getting out there you know let's start a community uh chit chat about that so yeah that's what i was gonna say. let us know if you have you know there's other strategies that maybe me and steven don't know about uh that you think we can improve on okay we're here we're teachers as well no i mean uh, students uh, students yeah <laughs> So we also want to learn, okay? <laughs> we teach, but we also want to learn, okay? We're like yeah. the PE teachers, you know? You know what they say, when if you if you can teach, teach. If you can't, be a PE teach teacher. People. So <laughs> keep it real, keep awesome. it gangster, and keep it broski doodles. Peace out. <laughs>